Hi, my name is Tracy Marinello, and I am the Office Manager for Florida Defenders of the Environment. And today I'd like to tell you a little bit about our organization and what we do. Uh, Florida Defenders of the Environment is one of the oldest environmental groups in Florida. We work to protect freshwater resources. Uh, we are involved with land conservation to protect wetlands legal actions against Amendment 1 uh, spending, legislative spending, uh, legal actions with water management districts, um, and our main objective for the last 50 years is to restore the Ocklawaha River by breaching the Rodman Dam. We support environmental education programs and we investigate herbicide use in Florida waters. So this is a, a map of the flooded area of the Ocklawaha River that starts behind the Rodman Kirkpatrick Dam right here. And all of this water flows north. It's supposed to connect to the St. John's River right here, but is blocked by this dam. So as you can see, the water piles up and creates what we call the Rodman flood pool. And it backs up the river all the way down. And when you start to get down towards Eureka, you could see more of the actual natural river channel. And the boat ramp here has fishing docks, which are permanent. So people who don't have boats can come out and fish uh, and enjoy the river, as well as those who do have boats. And it continues all the way down to where it meets up with the Silver River. So the Silver River is another tributary to the Ocklawaha River and continues on down into the Harris Chain of Lakes. But once again, this river flows north, like the St. John's flows north, and it's supposed to connect to the St. John's River here, but it is blocked by the dam. So the only way you can get to the St. John's River from this area is going through the Buckman Lock which is right here. And this is a very long canal, a barge canal, that um, just sits stagnant and grows tremendous amount of floating vegetation that also blocks this river. So continuously they have to spray herbicides here to keep this channel open. And in this area right in here, uh, you would find uh, right in here, Kenwood boat ramp, and over here would be Orange Springs boat ramp. And so most of the year when this is flooded, most of the time, you can't really get to these boat ramps because they'll be loaded with floating vegetation. So they seem to only clear them when they're having tournaments or a couple times a year for people to actually access this river. But during the drawdown, they have extended ramps that come all the way out to the near the river channel. So people from all over the area can come out and experience fishing off the bank. You don't need a boat to get out there to fish. But there are um, groups of bass fishermen who enjoy this flood pond to go in and catch bass. But lately, more and more, we see them not really even fishing in this part. They actually go out and go through the lock and go out and fish in the St. John's River. Something like 50% of the boats that launch from Kenwood during these tournaments go through this lock. And so people want to know why is it like that? Why is the dam there? Well, back, way back, uh, in Florida's history, someone decided they wanted to do a barge canal so they could float barges down the St. John's River, through the Ocklawaha River, destroy Silver Spring, and come out the other end on the Gulf Coast. So they created these lock systems where they would let the barges through, flood the water up so the barges could move along through this system. Well. Our organization 
and several other organizations in Florida banded together and required an environmental impact statement to be done. And the, the analysis of that impact statement showed that this would have cut Florida in half. This would have been so damaging to these rivers and our water. So finally, in 1971, uh, Richard Nixon stopped it. He put a halt on it. He said, we are not going to complete this horrible cross-border barge canal. But meanwhile, the dam remains and it serves absolutely no purpose. And there was an investigation done in the 70s by Mr. Abbott who found that there's close to 20 springs that are submerged in this river. And some of these springs are visible only during the drawdown. One of those that became very famous is Cannon Springs down about here. But there's another major, major spring right here that Blue Springs. Um, and then if this river was restored the public could enjoy these springs, which now remain flooded most of the time. So it's real important to restore this river, breach this dam, let it go back to normal, let these springs be exposed. Not only will we get several species of fish migrating back into this system, but we would also get manatees migrating back into this system. Uh, and it would be a very good warm water refuge for these manatees. And, you know, we'd still have great fishing, but we'd be able to catch more different species of fish than we are now. We would be using less herbicide treatments uh, because a free-flowing river wouldn't have all of this floating vegetation that's being sprayed now. And so this is a very important finding that uh, people need to know about. We are not able to enjoy these springs in this part of the state because of the flood of the dam. And this is some pictures of the Kirkpatrick Dam and as you can imagine there's lots of great fishing right here because all of the fish are trying to migrate up the river system and they can't get through. So they're stuck right here. Sometimes you'll see thousands of shad, American shad, just rolling and rolling and swimming around. It just like they're waiting for this to open so they can go through. And the kids will come along and they'll they'll hook them. There's so many here you can just throw your hook out there and hook some fish. But there's a, a big recreation area here that would remain because the structure would still be here. Um, there just wouldn't be any water right here on the other side. Um, there would be water here, but the river would reconnect uh, about 200 yards to the west where the earthen dam would be removed to reconnect the river where it originally was before the dam so that fish uh, and animals can migrate back into the system. Several different types of catfish, uh, American shad, American eel, uh, striped bass, um, several catfish as I mentioned, several smaller fish, darters. Um, there's uh, some evidence that even sturgeon may actually come back this far to migrate into the system if the river was restored. So here's some of the fish species and animal species that we're concerned about. The, the manatees could definitely migrate into the springs for, in the winter for warmth and to give birth. And these are um, striped bass, Atlantic striped bass, that used to be migrating in this river in the American shad and white catfish, channel catfish. Uh, the catfish used to be so abundant at times in Silver Springs that you could go and hold little dough balls over the sides of the glass bottom boat and the catfish would come and eat it right out of your hand. And now 
uh, Bob Knight did a study that showed as much as 70% of the fish are now missing from the system because they can't migrate into the Akawaha from the St. John's. And so down towards Eureka, you will see the um, river uh, is not as flooded. So it gives you a chance to see more of the natural river system as it would be once the vegetation grows up around the banks again. And, and where um, Orange Springs boat ramp is and Kenwood is, there would be permanent docks erected, such as the one in Eureka, where people who don't have boats can come and fish. So like during the drawdown, there's hundreds of people that come out to fish along the banks of Orange Springs boat ramp and Kenwood boat ramp that m most of the year, when it's not drawn down, they can't reach it. They can't reach the river. So there's nowhere for bank fishermen to fish but a restored river would have permanent docks for fishing, like the one in Eureka. And of course, more springs would be exposed for people to swim in. So what a great economic boom it would be to the area and what a great resource for the people in the area to be able to use this river year round and not just wait for drawdown. And so this is what the flood pool looks like when it's not drawn down, you can see these little stumps sticking up. This was all forest. This was all floodplain forest that was drowned by the water backing up behind this dam. And, and the fishermen will go out in the tournament and race over to Buckman Lock so they can get through to go fish in the St. John's instead of just launching at the St. John's doesn't really make much sense. But it used to be a, a wonderful bass fishing hole. Just imagine it's just like a, a, a sort of like a blocked off, you know, fish tank for the bass. So here's an image of all the people in the fishing tournament that chose to go through Buckman Lock instead of fishing in the Rodman flood pool. They're launching at Kenwood for a bass series tournament and they're going through the Buckman Lock out into the St. John's River to fish and then come back in to Kenwood and weigh in their fish. So this doesn't make any sense. This is just an image of one group going through the lock where we've had counts of at least 50% of the people in this tournament we're going through this lock. So it really doesn't make any sense to keep this flooded Rodman pool for bass fishing if the fishermen are going through this, the lock to go to the St. John's to catch the big ones. And so this is what it looks like during the, the drawdown. This is all of what would be forest if the river was restored. You'd still have a river channel, but the forest would be able to grow back. The fish would be able to migrate in. So we'd have more fish, better fish, cleaner fish. But during the drawdown, people come from all over the country to see this spectacle, to see the drawdown. And we take people out on boat cruises and show them the, the drawdown state of the flood pool. And the birds just flock there Several, several types of birds flock there during the drawdown and take advantage of this exposed areas. You hear everyone from one of the tours. We did paddle tours and boat tours. And everyone got together to do a free the Oklawaha moment. And so these are all the locals that come out and fish along the, the banks of the river during the drawdown. So this, it would be more permanent. There would be a permanent place for people to come year round. They wouldn't have to wait for the drawdown to come out and go fishing and feed their families. So this is a wasted resource when this pool is flooded. When, if the river was restored, there would be permanent 
bank fishing and and there would be those docks erected I spoke of earlier where people could come and fish year round and not just have to wait for the drawdown. And this is one of the most famous springs made famous by Margaret Tolbert and Matt Keane when they did their documentary, The Lost Springs. This little spring is called Cannon Springs and we watch it come back to life during the drawdown. You can just see the spring bubbling up out of the earth and turning the water back to a beautiful turquoise blue. And Margaret Tolbert is a great artist who paints the spring. And recently, um, Margaret Spontek helped us organize the Ankawaha River Restoration uh, Coalition. Um, and her website is called Free the Ankawaha. And she also has a, a Facebook um, page, Free the Ankawaha. And we have gotten now over 30 environmental organizations in Florida to sign on in support of a free flowing Ankawaha River. So Margaret is the head of this coalition. And um, at this point there was 28 organizations. Now I believe we have 32 organizations that have all come together and decided the best thing for this river is to restore it and reconnect it to the St. John's. And um, this is Captain Karen Chadwick and she's one of our captains that do the tours and she was wonderful to take out a group of students from the Environmental Ambassadors uh, summer program with the Cultural Arts Coalition every summer. Um, she does work with them as well as Nakwanda Jaw who runs the Cultural Arts Coalition and the Environmental Ambassadors summer program. Um, and they were out doing the drawdown and uh, enjoying the river. And uh, Captain Erica was showing them some fossilized bones um, and things that were found in the river. And we like to support this group. They do, the Quanda does great work with these children, uh, teaching them about the environment, how to protect it, um, and showing them the beauty of our earth and how they can make a difference. And our founder was Marjorie Harris Carr, and she fought most of her life to try to restore this river. And we're trying to finish her mission. Now our president is Jenny Carr, Marjorie Carr's granddaughter, and she is helping us to, um, to finally get the recognition we need and the push to restore this river. But one of Marjorie's famous quotes was, I believe that Floridians care about their environment. If they are educated about its perils, if they were never lied to, they will become stewards of wild places left in Florida. So how can you help? Well, we need to vote for candidates who are committed in protecting the environment. But to restore the Ocklawaha River, we are urging everyone to write a letter to the governor and tell him you want to free the Ocklawaha River. You want to see this river finally restored after 50 years so that everyone can enjoy its beauty and its springs and its fishing opportunities and not just leave it a flooded pool that has to be sprayed with over herbicides over and over again, and where fish and migrate cannot migrate, uh, fish and manatees cannot migrate back into the system. So, if you want to help, please write to our governor, tell him you want to free the Ankawaha River. Thank you very much.